Welcome to Developing Palettes. This review recap is brought to you by J.C. Newman. Founded in 1895 by Julius Caesar Newman, J.C. Newman Cigar Company is the oldest family-owned premium cigar maker in America. J.C. Newman rolls its El Rolage, factory throwouts, and Trader Jack cigars by hand-operated vintage cigar machines at its historic cigar factory in Tampa, Florida. It also hand-rolls its Brick House, Perla Del Mar, El Baton, and Quorum cigars at the J.C. Newman Pinza Cigar Factory in Esteli, Nicaragua. J.C. Newman's Diamond Crown, Maximus, Julius Caesar, and Black Diamond cigars are handmade at Tabaclera Afuente in the Dominican Republic. With its longtime partners, the Fuente family, the Newmans founded the Cigar Family Charitable Foundation, which supports low-income families in the Dominican Republic with education, health care, vocational training, and clean water. Learn more by visiting jcnewman.com. Hello, everyone. Aaron Lewis here from the Ventura Cigar Company Studio. With me today is John McTavish. How are you doing, John? I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. But today we are talking about the Ventura Archetype Cloaks Robusto. Uh, it is a 5x50, comes out of the Tabacalera Oliva de Nicaragua factory in Nicaragua. Wrappers connected broadleaf, binder, and filler are Nicaraguan Habano. Uh, price point is $9, and the cigar was released in October of 2018. So, John, how about you tell us about your smoking experience? So, as a sort of overreaching thing, I will say that this is a broadleaf cigar and there's no doubt that this is a broadleaf cigar and you know that sort of right off the hopper it's it's pretty clearly broadleaf um so that being said uh, first third flavors were leather earth cedar black pepper which lingered and intensified through the retrohale um and there was some baking spices that kind of came about halfway through but that was really dominated by the leather and the loamy earth and I would say that that kind of defines the first third. So, you know, imagine smoking a Connecticut Broadleaf wrapper without uh, without another kind of filler to augment or accent those flavor profiles. And that's how I would describe the first third. And the middle third was kind of a mirror of the first third, just with more intense pepper and earth. Um, so pepper and earth were kind of medium minus. So very palate heavy. Um, the, the There was maybe some mild mid palate vegetal but like it just got completely run over as well as the sweetness that i got and then uh last third uh really same as the middle third pepper and earth pepper and earth pepper and earth um and then sort of leather came about halfway through the last third and then took over um bringing a little bit of the cedar but uh, nothing to write home home about um in terms of burning construction uh i rated the burn as very good slightly and even in the first third um eventually requiring a touch up and then kind of a mirror image in the middle third uh, uneven burn requiring a touch up eventually i kind of let it go as far as i could um last third was uh, good no burn issues so go figure uh, ash held on about one and a half inches, roughly. Um, draw was kind of perfect. Um, maybe half a notch towards resistant, but that's just me being a picky reviewer. Aaron, what was your experience like? Yeah, for me, it was spicy and musty cedar that was slightly drying, uh, about three quarters of an inch in. The mustiness and spice increased, and the profile wasn't drying any longer. Uh, Retrohale had an even mix of the mustiness and the cedar with a mild spice level to it. Uh, about an inch in, the spice was uh you know, more identifiable as a just kind of general baking spice. Um, profile maintained itself through the end of the third. Um, strength was slightly below medium. Uh, second third, a little bit of char joins the cedar, which lessens the baking spice. Uh, mustiness was still a key player there. Uh, a little further in, uh, some bitterness joined in the profile. Uh, Retrohale was carrying a fairly charred cedar. Um, char moves to the lead about an inch in, and uh, there was a subtle cocoa in the background. Um, strength in the second third bumped up to medium. And then the final third, uh, cedar had trans transitioned to a general wood note, became uh, fuller to even out with the char, and the uh, the mustness was right behind it as the cocoa had faded away. Uh, half an inch in, char picks up again, brings a minty finish with it. Uh, Retrohale brings uh, the charred wood and the musty wood. Um, cigar maintained that profile through the end, uh, strengthened that, that final third remained at uh, medium mark. In regards to construction, um, a little bit wavy, but never needed any intention. Uh, ash held on an inch and a quarter increments. And uh, I thought the draw was perfect as well. Uh, no issues with it whatsoever. So overall, what were your thoughts on this one, John? Um, I rated the cigar overall as average, but I would say I was disappointed because uh, I tend to look forward to Broadleaf um, releases. And, uh, you know, I think the Broadleaf flavor was pretty clearly defined. It's just for me, the profile was missing something. So, you know, I don't know if that something was some creaminess, that something was just a different leaf or, ha or a half leaf of tobacco, but 
nothing really anchored it together. So, um, you know, you get a lot of broadleaf. So if someone really enjoys kind of that heavy profile of a, of a pure broadleaf experience, I think they're going to go bananas over this. Cause this, this is like, this is broadleaf, uh, you know, unfiltered, but that's not what I enjoy. And I found it way too heavy on the palate. So, um, you know, it's an overall average experience. It wasn't a bad experience. It's actually weirdly consistently average right. first. So, I mean, you could call it very consistent, uh, what about you, Ren? Yeah, I mean, I thought the first start, third started off well with that combination of musty cedar and spice, but from the, kind of the second, third on, it went downhill as that char entered and kind of continued building as the cigar went along. Um, knocked out some of the more enjoyable notes there. Um, not my favorite offering in this mini series, maybe my my least favorite out of the, out of the three. Um, I just thought that char just kind of over overpowered the profile once it got it got started. Um, but I mean, if if people um, have liked the other cigars from the series, and I think it's definitely worth giving this one a try, it's probably just not going to be something I'm going to I'm going to return to. Um, getting into the scores, we scored gave it the same score, five point six five. We just got wow. uh, to the scores a little differently. You were average consistently through the thirds, and then I went good average subpar, so kind of still even mm -hmm. out to overall average. So, how do you think five point six five matches up with your experience? That that sounds exactly right. I think you know we say this every time we have an average cigar is average isn't bad. Average just means that. Um, there's nothing in the prof in the profile of this cigar that separates it from a sort of a random cigar you'd grab off the shelf, which isn't right. to say, you know, again, it's bad. It's just, it's not elevated in any way, shape or form by something that it offers. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, you know, it just started off well, kind of went downhill from there to kind of even out to an average, but the, you know, construction is really good. That's what, you know, gives that little bump into the mid, the mid five. So it, it works out for it. Um, any other thoughts from you on this cigar? No. Um, you know, I did have high hopes. Uh, yes, I did have high hopes for it. <laughs> um, I think, uh, can't remember the one we tried before this, but that's been my favorite of the main releases so far. It was the, um, um was it the curses or the crystals? I think it was the curses. Okay. I think it was, yeah, I think that was maybe the one I enjoyed the most as well. So, yeah. yeah. All right, if you're just catching this via on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to us, but also check out the full written review on the website, developmentpalace.com. Follow us on the social media channels, and you can catch all of our review recaps on podcasts, so iTunes, Google Play, and Podbean. Thank you for tuning in. We will catch you on the next one.